So for those of you who may have missed last week's episode, I put a bit of a note in there to say that I'm finally moving out of home. It's been an entire year that I've lived here at mum and dad's place, building up this eBay business. And I'm now in a position where I can actually fend for myself, pay my own bills on the earnings that I'm generating through eBay and YouTube with this channel as well. So in today's video, I'm actually gonna update you on the changes that I've made over the weekend here at mum and dad's place that are gonna help me moving forward with this eBay business of mine. And, uh, and then next week, I'll take you into the new place once I've finally moved into to it. So a lot of changes, a lot of really cool updates to take you through. Can't wait to bring it to you. We're also going to jump into the weekend sales as well. And I'll pull the table up. I'll give you a look at the numbers. We had 21 items sell over the weekend period, a total revenue of $760, $114 in fees, postage of 191 bucks, and the cost of goods that sold $79. So guys, we've made 374 bucks in profit in just the weekend alone. It is a little bit less than what it has been in previous weeks, even though the listings have been consistent, but that's okay. It's just the way eBay operates. So let's dive into the first category to kick off this big, big video and dive into the DVDs that sold over the weekend. Righto guys, let's have a look at the DVDs that sold over the weekend. And we've had eight weekend winners to take you through. Uh, a total revenue of $223. I did want to kick things off with Roswell. This was the best of the bunch. It sold for $52.95 plus $30 worth of international postage. Just a huge Bolo DVD to be looking out for. Um, awesome to get the result on that one. Adventure Time, I found this one lying around the house and it's ended up selling for $45. So we've got five seasons there. I think it was missing season four. So even though it wasn't complete, still able to get 45 bucks for it. Uh, Pokemon Jirachi, found this in a trip to the thrift just on Thursday. Uh, paid the $2 for it, ended up selling it for $24. And 50 cents. Always rely on Pokemon. It'll get the job done. Uh, and then Sylvester Stallone, Judge Dredd. Uh, this one sold for $19.50 as well out of a Facebook Marketplace wholesale purchase. So a great little pickup there out of that bundle. Um, and then these ones there, all between sort of $10 to $15 each as well. So guys, $223. The DVDs are still selling. I am a big believer in the category. An average sale price of $28 per DVD. I should very quickly mention as well, we sold David Bowie, uh, Changes. This one sold for 10 bucks. I don't buy too many CDs, but uh, bought it for a dollar at a garage sale, moved it for $10, $4.50 track postage. It's only a $5.50 sale, but uh, it is another item that sold over the weekend. Hey, uh, just excuse the mess that's sitting up behind me there as well, guys. I've just got to go and grab another tub from uh, Bunnings. But uh, these were a pair of shoes that sold over the weekend. The Wonder Woman. So you might have remembered these in a recent uh, flea market trip last Sunday. So it was about a week turnaround on these ones. I bought them on negotiation for $15. They're a women's US size 9. Really cool graphic on them as well. It's an all over print. Um, they ended up selling for $59.95. So I'm going to make my $30 profit there on that purchase at $15. So a ripping uh, shoe. I should have bought the Supermans that were also there if you guys remember that video. But um, still, nonetheless, to get these done in the space of a week, I'm pretty happy. And these were the other two pairs that sold over the weekend. We've got the big guys, the Nike Lunarons. These are the Flyknits. They were an $18 purchase, as you would have seen in Thursday's Trip to the Thrift episode. A lot of use left in these shoes, and I ended up getting a $58.95 sale price. So no doubt, due to the larger size, these were a really quick turnaround in just 48 hours. I've made myself about a $25 profit on those ones. And then the Asics, the Gel Nimbus 21s. These are a pair of US size nine and a half women's running shoes. They are a collector's item, the older models. And uh, I was pretty happy to find these in the thrift. Ended up getting a $65 sale price on those Asics. So off the purchase price, I've made about a $40 profit on the Asics. And like I said, about 25 there. So we're looking at about 65 to $70 on two pairs of shoes in net profit. A pretty good result there. A pretty underrated category, in my opinion, guys, are the hats. And I've had two hats sell over the weekend. The first one is this St. George Illawarra Rugby League corduroy hat. I picked this one up in the flea just yesterday for a dollar. And it's ended up selling to somebody who watched the video yesterday for $29.99. So sold incredibly fast. May have underpriced this guy, but still happy to make myself a quick $15 profit on the St. George hat. And then the other one was an international sale for Stussy. The brand is definitely sought after, guys. I do love buying the clothing. Bought this one for a dollar at a garage sale. I did film it as well a few weeks back, so you may have seen me pick this one up. Ended up selling it for 25 bucks plus $25 worth of international postage. After fees and post, I might have made myself about a $20 profit on that hat as well. So $35 profit in two hats, and you generally pick these things up for a couple of bucks in the op shops and garage sales. So I think it's a really underrated category, and you guys should definitely be looking out for those. 
So we've actually had six items of clothing as well sell over the weekend. So the first one that I've got for you is one that I picked up not too long ago, trip to the thrift a couple of weeks back. You may have remembered it yourself, but 2XL, this was the South Sydney Rabbitohs hoodie. Um, very great condition, nothing wrong with it, no rips or tears, and I've got 35 bucks for it. So the rugby league gear, guys, anything sort of sporting related, you guys know that I pick these up regularly, and for good reason, they go on a sell. So to get the South Sydney's top done, uh, 35 bucks, bought it, I think in the end it was $5 I paid for this one, so the profit there should be about $17 to $15. Another one was just on Thursday. I bought the West Coast Eagles really horrendous Hawaiian shirt. Have a look at that. It's got the West Coast Eagles logo there. This was a 2XL. I'd never seen this design before on any of these sort of Hawaiian shirts for any AFL teams. But uh, there was a comp on eBay saying that these things sold brand new for $65. The bloke in the op shop sold it to me for 10 bucks. I was going to wear it on Saturday for Shit Shirt Saturday for our grand final party that we've got coming up. But uh, I ended up selling it for 50 bucks. So I guess I won't be able to wear it on Saturday. We'll have to put him into the post. But uh, he was a ripper. If you're an Eagles fan, you'd probably absolutely love it. So happy to sell it for 50 Pretty good profit off a $10 purchase. And then we also had this one as well. So this was a Canterbury size small, um, really nice long sleever, um, kind of like a rugby polo shirt and um, ended up selling for $30. So Canterbury, there it is there, just like the look of it, like the colors on it, a size small. I wouldn't normally pick it up, but to be able to buy it for five and sell it for 30, I thought that was definitely worth the purchase. And uh, the turnaround on this one, it's probably about three weeks from when I bought it. This one was a, uh, this was a bit of a surprise actually. I bought this for $2 in an op shop, just a very plain black Metallica t-shirt, nothing on the back either. It's a size extra large, the tag is just the Metallica tag, and uh, I've ended up selling it internationally. So I've got a $25, $30 actual international postage rate, uh, plus a $28.95 sale price. So $58.95 this thing has gone on to sell for, and I picked it up for $2, just really not thinking too much about it. So in the end, I'm probably gonna make myself a very clean $20 profit, and uh, it did sit around for a little bit, but those international sales, they really do help out. A couple of other pairs of clothing as well, just some board shorts. Um, so I won't take too long on these guys. A couple of brands for you guys to know, which you probably already do know. Uh, Von Zipper, there it is there, Von Zipper, really good brand. Uh, these have sold for $22.50. I only bought them for $3.00 in the op shop, they were 30 waist, they are just a plain black pair of board shorts. So to make them a $3 purchase into a $15 plus postage sale price, probably made myself about $8 profit. They've been sitting there for quite a while, but nonetheless, uh, good to get just move on, just get it out the door, probably don't buy those sort of items again. Um, bought these ones as well, nice pair of Quicksilver boardies. These are a 34 waist, my favorite size to buy when I'm buying menswear. Um, it's probably the most common. Um, so this one here at a 34 waist, um, just a really nice plain uh, black and white pair of boardies. So they've gone on to sell for $27 as well. Bought them for $6 in the op shop. So again, we're talking about just $12 worth of profit. So two pairs of boardies. I mean, look, they're very small items, bread and butter winners, but uh, $20 I've made off buying them out of the op shops. So that is 20 of the 21 items right there behind me. I do have the last one right here and is a set of books. We've got Lois Lowry. There she is right there, Lois Lowry. If you can find this book author, I've made myself a $38.95 sale price on a series of her books. So not sure if this is the full set. I actually think that it might be. I think that's why I got the full price from memory. Um, so the four books, the lowest layer, it's the way I was selling my books when I was selling my books. Uh, I'm not doing that so much now. I've actually got a bit of an update on the books a little bit later on in this video. If you are interested in buying them off me wholesale, all of my books, I'm gonna basically put them up for grabs for a very cheap price for somebody to locally come and pick up. So if you're interested, if you're here, local to the Gold Coast or Brisbane area, and you do want some books to sell on eBay, I've got a crap load. Um, so anyway, $38.95 on those, would have paid about a dollar each, so four in the 38, about 10 bucks worth of postage. I've made myself about a $25, nah, probably about a $20 profit with those ones. So this is everything that we've looked out to throw away. So it's all gonna be going out to the tip. Uh, no longer needed um, personal stuff and thrifted stuff. Um, we're just gonna get it all off and out of the way. So it really was a massive weekend. There was a lot of stuff cleaned out, taken to the tip, taken to different op shops. And uh, I really just wanted to provide the opportunity now to say that I am still using this place 
as an inventory and as an office space, a, a nine to five Monday to Friday type of a setup. I've got the complete support of my parents in doing that and it's gonna save a whole heap of money on storing items in, in a storage unit or even just cluttering up you know, the, the rental place that I'll be moving into. So they understand what I'm doing, they, they have the space for it here and it does save me still a lot of money in doing that. So uh, a huge thank you to them, but I did in this video, just wanna show you the way that I set it up. Um, so this room in here is where I wanna firstly start and really the intention of this room is to make it only only a listing station. I've obviously got my desk, my laptop, and I'll be doing all my eBay work off that. But I really want to just make sure that any inventory items that come into here are only to be listed. Once listed, they are then sent across to the storage room that I'll show you guys in a second. But look, it's a massive spacious room. Um, you know, you've got views at the front and the back of the place. The air just flows all the way through. It is truly a great room to be working out of and, and making videos out of as well. So that will remain the same. Um, what has changed is I was using two other spare bedrooms. Um, you might have seen them in, in previous videos, the, the two rooms that I was working out of. One was my room, one was another spare room. That has now all been condensed into just my bedroom or what was my bedroom. So let's go into that room now and I'll give you a bit of a tour around the new inventory holding area. All right guys, so welcome to the inventory room. This used to be my bedroom and now it's the inventory room. So everything that I buy and list will then get stored both here and out on the balcony that adjoins this room. So um, it's an awesome space. There's so much opportunity to really grow in this room as well. As you can see, most of it is pretty much bare at the minute. I've still got to get some shelving, um, put that basically right up to the roof. As long as I'm not touching the walls, mum says, uh, I'll be okay. So I'm going to pull the TV off. Um, I'm going to take Kobe down and take him back to my place that I'm going to. And, uh, and then yeah, we'll get some shelving up on the left and right hand sides. I've already got two bookcases in here at the moment. Um, they house basically all my DVDs and there are quite a number of them. That can continue to grow as well with the shelving that I'll put in here. Um, but the idea of it as well is to have this little housing station right in the middle of the room here. Now this uh, is gonna be changed. I've got that in there to, I guess, kind of give you an idea of what I'm thinking, but ultimately it's gonna be more of a high desk, one that I can actually just stand up in, no need for any chairs in here. Um, so I can basically just pick my orders from around the room and then just basically set up with my, all my postage equipment that will be literally underneath and up in the cupboard as well in this uh, in this spare bedroom. So um, it could just be a one-stop shop to film the what's sold. So I'm thinking of literally picking in the room, filming in the room, posting the order. Um, so that could be a really cool little setup in here. And then as for the outside in this little balcony enclosure area, this hasn't really changed too much from pretty much the way that it's always been. There's a lot of opportunity to continue to grow in this space as well. I do need to get a few more tubs as I spoke of earlier in this video, but look, there, there is a bunch of tubs already set up and I basically house all my shorts, my pants and, uh, and all of my shoes in here, but there is so much more empty space now that I've taken a few things to the tip that I can really expand in this room as well. But it's a really great connecting piece. I can really kind of work out of this room here. And then I've got all this outside storage area as well that's still fully enclosed if it does rain. So look, I think it's a brilliant setup. I think it's one that I could really work out of in the sense of the opportunity that I can grow in it um, for really quite some time um, to come. So it's pretty exciting. It's, it's, I guess, a big change because I've lived in this room for so many years growing up. Um, and now it's a business room and I can actually operate it and fully function as a full-time business. So um, super exciting stuff. I just want to touch on the books. So I'll quickly show you those. So these are all the books that I've basically taken off a bookshelf. And I, like I said, I don't want to sell books anymore, not because they don't sell, but just because I don't have any passion for selling books. I always sell the stuff that I like. So there's no real rhyme or reason or order to any of these books. They are hardcover paperback. There's series in there. There's kids' books. Um, all the Guinness World Record books that I'm yet to list are right there as well. So all of these books, I'm thinking about literally 50 cents a piece. I would have bought them all for maybe a dollar a piece, um, but I'm happy to sell them off at whatever it works out to. However many books there are in there, I'm thinking 50 cents each, and uh, and that could be a great deal for somebody to list up and sell for some good money on eBay. So um, I've got still in this room, I've got my wholesale bundle here. So all of these DVDs, they're not worth anything more than basically 7 or $8 at most per DVD. But all of those DVDs need to sell on Facebook Marketplace as a bundle to somebody that might want to purchase them. So for now, they're housed in here until I get those storage tubs. That was my wholesale jumper uh, purchase. So these, look, I've really given up hope on these jumpers. They are still in here, but they are yet to be listed, a lot of these um, jumpers. So um, there's still three boxes of them. I've really given up on them. I just really dislike that wholesale order, and uh, I kind of want to forget about it. But 
I do need to leave it in here. Um, in here, there is some storage as well for clothing, and this is fully stacked with clothing that is all listed up onto my eBay store. Uh, and then I've got my shoes, my three pairs of shoes that I absolutely love, the two pairs of Jordans and the Nike Liberty. Um, they're going to sit down there just to be a little bit safer than out in the tubs outside. So that's pretty much everything, guys. It's, it's an awesome working space. I'm pretty wrapped to basically have it complete, clean, and tidy and ready to get going for what is going to be a pretty exciting couple of months and years ahead in this room. And uh, yeah, I'm absolutely blown away and uh, I'm stoked to get you guys in here today to check it all out. I think what I've loved the most though about all of this is that I've, I've turned the camera on before I even sold an item, basically. I, right from the very beginning, I've just documented this entire journey. And those of you who, that have been here for the majority of that time, you would have seen the different stages along the way that have slowly developed over the last couple of months. And I'm really excited about for the future as I've touched on already in this video before, but I genuinely am. And I'm really more so excited the fact that I've got you guys out there, a community of people that are interested in the same thing that I can just document and try and help and educate throughout this period and look who knows what comes after this we've got this little spare bedroom now operating it might be a mini storage unit after that and then from there it might be a warehouse then after that there might be some staff associated to what we're doing here it's just really cool to sit back and bring you guys along for the ride with me so thank you for being a part of it if you're still here right now i, I seriously get so motivated every single week to keep making you guys videos and, and the support that you guys show me in the comments and, and liking the videos is just absolutely huge so I'm going to keep doing my bit and, and I'm really stoked to see you guys still continue to tune in. So thank you very much for that. Um, that's everything, guys. I will leave you with another video right here, which is a whole bunch more of sold items on eBay. So if you, if you want to get into eBay, build up a little uh, storage room in your own house yourself. We'll start finding some of these items because uh, it'll get you there. Thanks very much for being here, guys. We'll see you soon.